Isaiah started a teaching. We started a teaching about three weeks ago after I came back from Africa. We were over in Africa for some time. And one thing that always bothered me when I go to Africa, whether it be West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, wherever, or, and when I go to Asia, what I see, and what I see also here in America, praise God. And it kind of been bothering me, praise God, especially when I go to Africa, amen. Apostle Stacy, he's an apostle to Asia, and I'm an apostle to Africa. I go with him to Asia, he goes, comes with me to Africa. This last trip was a long trip, amen, very, we had five different conferences, training leaders, amen. And what I took, he took me to some places that was very poverty stricken, poverty stricken. They had not seen any foreigners for a long, long time, amen, praise God. They looked at Apostle Stacy. They just stared at Apostle Stacy. Apostle Stacy is a, my brother, he's a white brother. <laughs> and they saw, when they saw him, they looked at him, looked at him, looked at him. Yeah. Amen. In Africa, they call the white man a mzungu. Amen. Mzungu. Yeah, so we laugh about that all the time. Amen. That's why you hear me tell Barry, playing a horn, calm down, Mazungo, calm down, calm down, calm down, amen, praise God. But one thing that really bothers me when I travel is that in Africa, I'm doing a little review, nobody can beat them Africans praying. They can pray, though, as one of the mothers said back in the olden days, they can pray, pray the horns off a of billy goat. Nobody can beat them praying. Nobody can beat them singing and dancing. Beat them praying either. Praying and preaching and praying. But all the, in all the world, they are the poorest. They are the poorest. But it's the richest continent on the planet. Even over in Asia, we see the poverty in Asia. And it's a shame when, when you see those who come to Christ and his riches, riches of his grace, and they are going through those conditions. Amen. Amen. Put up on the screen Ecclesiastes chapter 10. See verse 5 through 7. Ecclesiastes 10, 5 through 7. This is Solomon, he wrote this. He says, there is an evil. He said, this is evil, what I've seen. This is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Folly, which means fools. Folly is set in great dignity, which means that they're set high. And the rich set in low places, down low, but all the fools are up top. I have seen servants upon horses, and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Hold it right there. He said, I've seen servants upon horses. Back in the day, the only people who had horses or donkeys were the rich people and kings. Common people didn't have horses. Only the rich had horses. Amen. That's why Jesus Christ, we call it Palm Sunday, when he rode into Jerusalem, he rode in on a donkey. Amen. Kings rode on donkeys, amen. He says, I've seen servants up on horses and prince walking as servants. The prince, the king, kid, he's walking. And the servant is, is riding in Lexus. <laughs> if I can bring it down. He's riding in Lexus, BMWs. And, and the Christians are riding bicycles and motorbikes. Oh, you follow me? So Solomon said, this is an evil that I've seen. Go to, go to verse 8. Did we do eight? No. That's good enough. It's this, there is an evil that I have seen, praise God. And as I looked at this, remind me of Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. He says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
Christians have a lack of knowledge of who they are. Who they are. Who they are. Who they are. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, 9. He said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, you are a what? Chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He said, you are royalty. Uh-huh. How many know that whoever accepts Jesus Christ, you are transferred from the kingdom of darkness and now you're in the kingdom of Jesus. Amen. Not only are you trampling to his kingdom, but you, are, you become royalty. 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 You won't hear this taught the way I'm going to teach it. Royalty. We are kings. I say we are kings. Amen. Amen. We are not the king, but we are kings. Praise God. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Look what John says. He says, and has made us what? Kings and priests. Kings and priests. Look at Revelation chapter 5. We'll start reading verse 1. Revelation 5, 1. And this is Jesus. No, John, when he's on the island of Patmos, he's seen his vision and everything. And look what he says. John says, he said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Seven. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four twenty-four elders fell down and before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows, full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new, a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, watch this, and to open the seal thereof, for thou was slain. He's talking about Jesus and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and every tongue and people and nation. I like this part. It has made us, it has made us, it has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Uh-huh. Praise God. This is a picture of Jesus, what John saw when he was on the island of Patmos. And when he saw the father had something, a book in his hand, and said, nobody was able to come and take this book. Amen. What was this book that he had in his hand? This book, as we studied in Bible college, this book was considered the title deed of the earth. The title deed. Jesus had got it back. When Jesus Christ came, he said, it is finished. What he was saying was, I got it back. What did he get back? He got back man's authority on the earth. He got back what Adam had lost. He got back. Got it back. 
Look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. He got it back. These shall make war with the Lamb, and, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for the, he is Lord of lords and King of kings. Look at this right here. He is Lord of lords and King of kings. He's Lord of lords and kings. See, it's a capital K. Capital K. He's king of kings, small k. That's us. We are kings on the earth. We are kings on the earth. And God has given us dominion. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the earth. Amen. So he made man and gave him dominion over the earth. But when Adam sinned, man lost dominion. He lost his kingship. Lost his kingship. Amen. But Jesus came to restore that kingship. Are oh, you listening to me? Amen. He came to restore. Came to restore, put us back in the position where we were before Adam sinned. Amen. He made us kings. Kings. And when he came back, he was preaching all over the Bible, all over the gospel. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. When you look at this word king, kingdom, and royalty, look, put up on the screen, kingdom. We'll find that word over 155 times throughout the gospel. Look what it means. It's a Greek word, basileia. It means to rule and to reign sovereignty. That's what it means. Hold it right there. Over 150 times he kept saying Basilea, Basilea, rule, reign, rule, reign, rule, reign. Look what royalty means. Royalty. The word royalty is Basileos. It means a king. So he had made a priest and what? Kings. But Basilea and Basilea come from the same Greek word, amen. It's a root word, Basileos. It means to rule, to reign as king. So Jesus Christ came to put us in position to rule and to reign here on earth, amen. And once we accept Jesus Christ, I won't be long, once we accept Jesus Christ, whether you know it or not, you are a king. <laughs> you are to rule and to reign on earth. Jesus came and died. Oh, he died for my sin. Oh, yeah, he died for our sins. Because he had to take care of the sin first. Before he could put us back into where we belong, what, where God wants us, he had to first take care of the sin. Are oh, you following me? When he was on the cross, he shed his blood. He said, it is finished. There's only one thing we're left. That was to go down to hell and snatch the keys of hell from the devil. Then he came back here now, I got all authority. Are oh, you listening to me? Praise God. The right mentality when we get saved. When I was in Africa, I saw what has happened. And I go to Asia, I saw what has happened. Missionaries have gone there with good intentions, but they're getting everybody saved. Getting everybody saved, and that's good. But nobody came behind them and told them who they were. Nobody came behind and told them that they were royalty. Whether you believe it or know it or not, you, if you accept Jesus Christ, you are royalty, you have, you have authority. Oh, you know, how many listen to what I'm saying? And, 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 and watch this. And this royalty that you have, amen, the devil can't take it from you. Matter of fact, you can't be voted out. <laughs> are you listening to me? You can't be voted out. You, you, you are royalty. Whether you're walking around, you are royalty. You can't be voted out. You can't be impeached. <laughs> oh, you listen to me. Amen. Whether you know it or not, 
In order to get this royalty that we're talking about, like any other kingdom in the royalty, you have to be born into it. <laughs> to be a king, you have to be a prince, and your daddy has to rule. Are you listening to me? No one else can come and be a king. If you're not in that lineage, you can't be a king. But because we were born, not of flesh and blood, but of the spirit of the living God. Amen. Are you listening to me? Well, we ain't talking no religion today. You can go somewhere else. And they'll tell you, oh, yeah, just a post sinner going to heaven, head going to heaven. We don't do that up in here. We teach who you are. In Christ Jesus. You have authority. You are a king in the eyesight of God. Whether you know it or not, whether you know it or not, you are a king. In the eyesight of God, you are to rule and to reign here on earth. To rule and to reign. Once you accept Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. All things are passed away, but now all things, what? Become new. <laughs> all things become new. Now I got to think different. I got to act different. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I got to think different, and I got to act different. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 2, excuse me, Proverbs 27, 23, verse 7. 23, verse 7. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You got to begin to think who you are. Uh -huh. I'm not just no Dave Kenny. I'm not Dave Kenny, born here and from New York City. No, 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 no. When I accept Jesus Christ, I got elevated. I said I got elevated. I came coming the seed of the living God, the creator of the entire universe. Amen. How are you going to think? From the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Paul told the church at Philipp Philippi, says, go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He said, think like Jesus. <laughs> think like Jesus. How do we think like Jesus? He said, Jesus said, I'm only going to say, speak what my father told me to say. I ain't saying nothing else. I don't care how it looks. I don't care how it looks. I'm only going to say what my father says. When I went to the hospital, I was on a fast for three weeks, getting ready to go to Thailand and Cambodia. So I was fasting. A lot of you know the story. Then after I came off, to the, came off the fast, I couldn't go to the bathroom. I went to this, this doctor, that doctor, this doctor, that doctor. I told my wife, so I'm going to the hospital. I went to the hospital, they, they examined me. They came back and said, Mr. Kenny, you have cancer. See the x-ray? You got cancer. I looked at him. Well, y'all do what y'all got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. I never said I had cancer. He went to my wife, showed her, said, Miss Kitty, your husband has cancer. My son was standing next to her. She looked at my son, Aaron, and said, don't repeat that. Don't repeat it. Don't repeat it. What did I do? Even to put me on the operating table, I kept saying, by his stripes, I am healed. Father, I thank you. You said all things work together for your good. Thank you. I'm healed. Thank you, Father God. Knowing your word should not return. I kept quoting scripture. I, I said what God said. They went in, did all they had to do when they came back, said, Mr. Ken, we can't find nothing. Mr. Ken, you don't even need no chemotherapy. You need no radiation. You don't need no medication. You can go. <laughs> Are you following me? Are you listening to me? Speak what God says. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter if it's pain. You are a child of the king. You are a king. You that speak what God says. 
And that's the problem here in America today. Today, we have a mess in our country. And we're still the greatest country in the world. Don't get me wrong. But what we got going on now is not God. It's not God. We as Christians don't know the authority that we have. Are you listening to me? <laughs> we don't know the authority we have. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. We got to speak what God says. Ecclesiastes 8, 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. When a king speaks, you can't veto it. You can't vote on it. It's done. And we as kings and priests here on earth, what's going on now? These Christians don't know who they are. Don't know who they are. They're allowing things to happen that should, that's a sin. Now, let me say this. I'm not against homosexuals. I'm against the sin of homosexuality. That's it. You do whatever you want to do. I'm not against you. That's what you're doing. I'm against the sin. Gender sex and changing your sex. Do a little I'm against that. How many know God is the God of purpose? Yeah. Amen. How, how, how many know God is the God of purpose? Yeah. And before you even got here, God knew what you were going to be. What did he tell Jeremiah? He said, when you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. What did he tell Elizabeth about John the Baptist? Before she had conceived, he knew what he was going to be. Sadly, before he got here, what? He knew what he was going to be. And before you got here, he knew what you were going to be. Amen. Are you following me? And why we're in the condition that we're in? Because the church don't know who they are, don't know the power and the authority that they have. Go to the... We're in the book, we started in Judges. Go to Judges 21 25. Judges 21 25. It says, In those days there was no king in Israel, and every man did what that which was right in his own eyes. There was no king. Everybody did what they thought was right. But here in America, there is a king. We are kings, we have authority. We are kings. We have a thought. We can change what's up. We can utilize our civil rights. We can go and vote. But God is in control. I said God is in control. God's in control. Christians don't know who they are. They don't know that they are royals. They don't know they can speak. They can speak. They're kings. You got to know who you are. Jesus was on his way to Caesarea Philippi. And he stopped. And he asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? <laughs> and all the disciples says, oh, some say you're J John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah. He said, oh, okay, but who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Peter, <laughs> go to 16. Go, go to Matthew 16, verse 18, I believe. 16, 18. And when Jesus came, eight, eight, go, go up to about 16, verse 16. Go to about verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living, living God. See, Peter, he knew who Jesus was. And look what Jesus said. Look what the next verse and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, David Kennedy. I'm putting my name there. <laughs> Blessed are thou, David Kennedy, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven is 18. I like this. And I say also unto thee, thou, that thou art David Kennedy, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Watch this. Watch this. And I will give unto thee the keys. <laughs> Uh-huh. The keys. If you know who Jesus Christ is, you got some keys. 
I said, you got some keys. And keys in the Bible stand for authority. Authority. You got authority. No matter what the world does, what happens, what they say, you are a king. And the words of a king is powerful. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. You don't get this teaching everywhere. Everybody talking about going to heaven, going to heaven, going to heaven. What are you doing? I said, what are you going to heaven? Jesus only spoke about going to heaven how many times? One time in three years. He spoke about the kingdom of heaven, but he didn't talk about going to heaven but three times, but one time in three years. The rest of the time was all about kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Basilea, Basilea, rule, reign, rule, reign. For three years, all he talked, most of what he talked about. Putting things back the way it was before Adam messed up. Know who you are. He said, whatever you bind, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound here. Man, let me tell you how many times I have bound some stuff up. <laughs> when we first started the church, they were coming in a warehouse. This person had an accident. This person had an accident. This person had an accident. A lot of people have accidents all in the, in the church. What do we do? What do we do? We bind it up, and guess what happened? It stopped. Amen. We took our authority as sons of God, as kings here on earth, and we spoke it, we got together. It, if any two of you shall touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. We tested, agree, and stopped it. Know who you are. Know who you are. You can't change it. The devil can't change it. You can't change it, and the devil can't change it. You are royalty. I said you are royalty. We are kings and priests. I didn't say it. The word of God. I'm only telling you what the word of God says. But with all this authority and all this power, here comes Satan. <laughs> here comes Satan. Old Slewfoot. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Here he comes. Here he comes. He got the nerve to mess with the king's kids. He got the nerve to mess with us. And look, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He, he said, be, be, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Walking about seeking whom he may devour. With all this authority, here he comes. Look and see who he can devour. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Who can I devour? Who, whose pocket can I pick? Who can I put some sickness on? What family can I create a divorce? What kids can I have to give a gun and kill each other? He's coming to what? To kill. And he's coming in the church. The church is 50% divorced. Take, got, it out of, got it out of the order of God. But yet we are kings. Am I in this place about myself? Y'all act like I'm in Singapore. You know, when I go to Asia, they don't say amen or nothing. They just look. <laughs> Y'all black folks. Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, you got to say hey, amen, say something. Amen. Yeah. He's coming to kill, coming to steal, coming to destroy. How's he going to do that? How's he going to take what's yours? How's he going to make you walk and he's going to ride? How do you get on your horse? Tell that devil, say, get off my horse. Say, get off my horse. Say, get off my horse. How's he going to do that? Hold up, I'll say, Keith, take that How's he going to do that? You know how he's going to do that? I'm going to show you how he's going to do that. I'm going to show you how to Go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. While you're going there, I see you back there, big ass self. 
my son just came in too. His name is David. He just came in from Indiana. Watch this. How's he going to do this? Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant or a slave, though he be Lord of all. <laughs> look, look at that. He's a, he's a, now I say that the heir, that's me and you, as long as we, he's a child, as long as we're babies, Long we're babies. Long we're babies. He got us. He got us. I said, how? <laughs> he got us. He got us. Look at verse 2. But it, but it's under, but we're, ba we're a child. But we're under a tutor. Tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. See, whoa, he said, when, you, when we catch, come to Jesus, we're babies, but we're, we're under a tutor. Just like a king. When he has, when he has children, little boy, little good girl, right? But they, they can't rule, but they got a tutor. Somebody teach them how to think. Teach them how to speak. Let them know who you are. No, you don't do that. They were up on the tutor. Are you following me? Amen. How many know when we come to Jesus, we got a tutor? Amen. It's called the Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Spirit. I said it's the Holy Spirit. He's on the inside of us. He's on the inside of us. But he's under a tutor. And governors, this tutor is with him all the time. Take him to school. Go bring him out. He's, wherever that little boy go, little girl go, wherever he go, that tutor right there. Right there. He, he's appointed. He don't leave him. He don't leave him. He don't leave him. Wherever he goes, he's right there. He's teaching him. No, 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 no. Don't do this. Somebody say amen. amen. Put it back up there. Look at verse 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. He said, when we were children, we were in bondage from the elements of the world. But when, when we got to Jesus Christ, we broke the chains. We broke the chains. But here he comes. Now his next thing is to do, you don't grow up. You don't He's going to stop you from growing up to who you're supposed to be. We're all babies. So you don't learn who you are and how to live in the kingdom. Speak as a king. Speak what God says. Stop following religion. Amen. Oh, I just want to make it to heaven. You got heaven made. You want to go to heaven? How I many you want to go to heaven? Yes. <laughs> See, see, see y'all know better. Y'all know y'all, you want to go to heaven, all you do is die. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. But God didn't create us for heaven. Amen. We were created for the earth. Amen. We were created for the earth, and the earth is ours. Go to Psalm 115, verse 16. Psalm 150, verse 16. Psalm 150, verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but... The earth has been given to the children of men. This is for us. We were created here, and we were made to rule in the reign here on earth. We're kings. Got to think right. Got to speak right. We got to think right. Don't care how he looks. Speak as a king. Grow up. Get in the word. You got to grow up. You didn't come here full grown. So when you accept Jesus Christ, you was a baby. You was a baby. Yeah. But now you got to learn. You got to learn how to live in the kingdom. You got to learn how to, how to live in the kingdom. 
Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Paul talked to the church at Corinth. When he left, the devil came in and tried to create a whole lot of problems. Paul had just got them saved. And look what he says. He said, I, brother, when I was there with you before, he said, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babies. He said, when I was there before, I couldn't talk to you like I wanted to talk to you because you was babies. Look at verse 2. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. I only gave you some milk. But little two, you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. He said, you were babies then, you ain't even grown up. You're still a baby. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there are among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal? And walk, oh, he said walk as men. Walk as men. Walk as men. Walk as men. We're not natural. We're not normal. We are, not, we are a supernatural people. We are supernatural. Greater is he that's in me. I said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ. I am not a, I'm not normal. <laughs> I ain't normal. Once you accept Jesus Christ, you are a king. Kings are not normal. Learn who you are. The devil's coming. Got to find somebody who, who's a baby. You know what you do with a baby? You know what you do with a baby? Go to Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4. Go, no, Ephesians 4, 14, uh, Ephesians 4, look at verse 14. Oh, before you put it up there, right? Before you put it up there. Take, take it down. God know the devil is coming. He know it. He know it. He know the devil is coming. You know, you can't outslick God. God got this thing already set up for us. He know the enemy's going to come, so God put a team together. If y'all think them Atlanta Braves are hot, he got a team. You know what it's called? It's called the five-fold ministry gifts. He got a team. He got apostles. He got prophets. He got evangelists, pastors, and teachers. This is a team. This is his team. So what the devil has come and done, he dismantled the team with, through religion. You can't tell Catholic people, apostles? There's no apostles today. See that? There's no apostles today. There's no prophets today. See there? He dismantled the team. And his team was put together for a reason. Go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse, let's start verse 11. Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave, who? He. Who is he? Jesus. He. If he gave some, Apostle, if he gave some a prophet, if he gave some evangelist, if he gave some pastors and teachers, who can take them out? Yeah. If he put them there, if he put, put, he put them there for a reason. He said, for the perfecting of the saints. He put them there for what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edified, of the, oh, for the edified, to build the body of Christ, he put this team together. Amen. 13. Tell we all come into the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, watch this. Why, why, why? That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the sight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie, lie and wait to deceive. They were put there. These gifts were put there to mature you. How many glad? How many glad that you're in the house of an apostle? 
How many of you glad you're in a house where there's a prophet? How many of you are glad you're in a house where there's a teacher? How many of you are glad you're in a house where there's an evangelist? Dukes won more souls last, last year than some church together. How many glad you're in a house where there's a, where there's a pastor? Where the five-fold ministry is in operation. To know who you are so you don't be tossed to and fro. If you're in a church, and you're watching me, if you're in a church and all you got there is a pastor, you don't even have a good team. You got to throw the ball, you got to run, and you got to catch it. If you're a quarterback, you got to fade back, you got to throw the pass, you got to run, you got to catch it. You also got to block for yourself. Got to have a team. And Jesus put together a team. He put together a team to, to, to do what? To edify. To build us up. And he gave us the key. We have the authority to change some stuff. I don't know how many times I've spoken over my kids, over my wife, over the church, and saw it come to pass. You talking about a challenge? That boy back there, he's, he's 53 years old now. When he was coming up in Brooklyn, whew, he was a challenge. I mean, he was a challenge. Me and his mother had to pray and speak the word, 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 speak the word. Never stop. No matter what happened, he get kicked out of this school, we speak the word. You go to this school, you speak the word. No matter what happens, get him out of high school, but we kept speaking the word. He goes down to Tuskegee on a football scholarship. Got in all kind of trouble in Tuskegee. He's back there. Stay, he stayed in Tuskegee so long, he got a job working for the city. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? We kept praying, kept speaking. Amen. Guess what? He graduated. Amen. Got his bachelor's. And he just got his master's from Butler University. No matter how it looks on your kid, you always speak. Don't speak what you see. Don't speak how you feel. You are royalty. Amen. Tell that devil, get off my horse. Get off my Say, get off my horse. Get off my horse. We're royalty. We're ro we are put here to rule and he put here to rule and to reign. God is able. Let this mind, let this mind being you that was in Christ Jesus. No matter how it looks, me and Dukes was over in Thailand and they brought a baby up. He never walked. He never walked. Never walked. Put him down. I'm the king's kid. I'm the king's kid. I began to speak the word of that, that little boy. He, I said, in the name of Jesus, Jesus be glorified. Dukes were right there. Don't worry about witchcraft. Don't worry about no other power. You have it. You got authority over every demon there is. We was over in Thailand. Was in Thailand. Dukes bring a guy to me. He says, Pastor, this guy, he can't open up his hands. If he opened up his hands, it hurt. I thought, come here. I, look at, I got ready to minister to him. Duke said, uh, Pastor, by the way, he's a witch doctor. I said to myself, thanks a lot, Dukes. <laughs> but guess what? Because I was a king, I spoke over him, that witch doctor started doing like this. And I kept ministering to other people. He got up on the stage, right, Dukes? and began to preach Jesus. And he has been a witch doctor for 52 years. 
But we didn't come there to get them saved. We come to show them that they are in the kingdom of God and they have power. Jesus said, as my father sent me, I'm sending you. And Jesus, Jesus said, I have some power. A little power. He said, I have all power. And as my father sent me, I'm sending you with what? All power. All power. So what are we going to do, apostle? Go to First Peter chapter 2. We're going to cl close it up. First Peter chapter 2. First two, first Peter two two. Here, here's your attitude right now. As newborn babes, okay, when you come to Christ, as newborn babes, look what he said. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. He said, let's say this. He's a desire. He's a desire. Desire what? The sincere milk of the word. The sincere, no deceit. Don't, don't, don't go somewhere where you can be, for you, for, where you go mess with your feelings. Oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. What did he, what, where you been? I've been to church. What did he preach on? I don't know, but it was good. Yeah. We don't come here for that. This is Christian growth. This is Christian growth. This is where Christians grow. Amen. Know who they are. And we are king, king, King and sons of the king. Amen. What did Paul say? My brother, he said, now, not tomorrow, not next, now are you the sons of God. He said, now, not tomorrow, not next week, now. But all you got to do now, study, read the word, read the word, study. This is sincere, look at the word. No deceitfulness. Don't listen to people who are just making you feel good. Dr. David wrote a book, The Captive Soul. Your soul now, your soul was not born again. Only your spirit. Now we got to work on that soul. We got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We got to think different. No matter how it looks, no matter where you come from, we all came out of a mess. Well, I didn't do all you did, Apostle. That's okay. Apostle, you said you was a whoremonger. You used to gamble. You used to fight. You used to snort cocaine, smoke dope, drink liquor, just taste with Coke 45, had so many women, 700 club, bitch, a life story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't as bad as you, Pastor. No, you was on your hell being a goody-goody. I was on my hell having fun. <laughs> Until I found out about Jesus. When I found out about Jesus and came to him. When I came to him, he changed everything. Now, I'm a king's kid. And I'm a king. And so are you. Did you hear that God today? Yeah. Dear Lord, here come for you. Oh, yeah. God is good. I said, God is good. Know who 